without fail, you will hear landscape photographers complain about how bad the light is, how blue sky days are the worst, and there is nothing to photograph if there are no clouds. There is no bad light. There's only different qualities of light. So photographers tend to think of good light as blazing sunrises and sunsets. And we love to chase these magical moments of light that are fleeting and add something special to the scene. And while this is certainly true, and I still love to photograph these types of scenes in dramatic light, um, but I have come to appreciate nearly all qualities of light. So this begs the question, what exactly is there to photograph on blue sky days? I'm sure many of you saw Jennifer and I's presentation at the last Out of Chicago in-depth event on this very subject. So I'm not going to rehash that completely. Instead, I'm going to show you some new images that I've added to my portfolio from the past few months that were all taken without a cloud in the sky. So we spent extended time in Death Valley and Zion National Parks, and 90% of the days were bluebird skies but we did not resign ourselves to this weather and instead we embraced the conditions and ended up having one of our most productive trips yet. So we spent a lot of time at the sand dunes which are the perfect subject for really dramatic black and white images and in late morning or early afternoon the harsh light creates this stunning contrast that accentuates the sinuous curves. It also gave me an opportunity to get out my super telephoto lens and focus on the abstract nature of the curves, lines, and shadows, and tones. Not to mention the incredible textures in the windblown sand, which are really easy to overlook until you pay attention to the minute details and zoom in on them. And the harsh light really brings out the detail in these fascinating patterns and each patch of sand has its own unique personality. And then once the sun set, I refocus my attention to the stunning soft light created during twilight. Now, once the sun is below the horizon, it reflects off the atmosphere and it creates this soft pastel light that I had an absolute ball photographing with my telephoto. So the next time you go out, make it a point to stay out much longer once the sun sets or get there much earlier before the sun rises. So on a clear day, the fun starts 10 to 20 minutes after sunset or before sunrise. And this is my favorite light to photograph in. And many photographers that are just chasing that epic sunset never see it sadly. And this is actually best on clear sky days because if there's clouds in the sky, then it actually kind of blocks this and you don't see as much of that twilight glow. So we spent many of our days exploring the endless canyons in Death Valley and we were not disappointed. These are so much fun to explore. After a long slog through the hot desert, you find respite in these cool canyons and some of which even have water. So blue skies are again the best conditions for photographing canyons. The sunlight hits one side of the canyon and reflects this soft glowing light on the other side, while some areas of the canyon are just left in shadow, which creates this brilliant color contrast between warm and cool. And in Zion, we also had many blue sky days, so we fo focused on the canyons as well. And in the main canyon, you can find splashes of light on the walls at the end of the day. And I was able to use a telephoto again to focus on the intimate scenes of the light and the trees and the rock walls. And the light is really fleeting, so you have to act fast before it disappears. And I also focused on the textures in the canyon walls, which can really be fascinating as well. And then while exploring a lesser known canyon in Zion, we found these surreal ice patterns above a small creek. So these fractal patterns had formed overnight, and by the time that we were hiking back out, they were completely gone, they had melted. So there was no special light here. These were taken in the shade of the dark cool canyon and the patterns of the ice were the subject that just kept us occupied for hours. So we even photographed the grand landscape. 
Again, this was taken during twilight, which creates this fantastic soft light. So the salt also reflects the color in the sky and it appears to glow in these conditions. So in this case, I prefer the cloudless sky. Clouds would have distracted from the subject of the interesting salt patterns. So in general, you need to be facing away from the sun to create an image like this in twilight. If I were facing the other direction, the sky would be too bright. But when you face away from it, then the sky is really soft and it's actually very balanced with the foreground. So I actually rarely shoot towards the sun unless there's amazing clouds and that's a whole different story. <laughs>